Okay, here we're going to look at the dripping bloodstain pattern interpretation. We're going to get to see some actual uh, bloodstain patterns left, and we'll get to appreciate some of the occurrences or situations that lead to the development of what we see as the end result. So first off, dripping blood, just in general, a uh, blood drop will grow until the weight is greater than the strength of the surface tension, and surface tension pulls in a vertically and horizontally. Droplet does not break apart until the point of impact. So here we see a, we'll say a cut at the end of the finger, we see it dropping down. We have that surface tension holding that kind of droplet together, and it's only uh, breaking apart when it will in reach the impact with the surface here and that will lead to a drip pattern. So blood will be free falling and drop onto itself in an area of wet blood. The area will be a large irregular and have a central stain. Small, uh, look for the small round and oval satellite stains that do occur. Remember, these are the little satellite stains, these little areas independent um, outside of that original drop. These little kind of points here will be called the spikes. Satellites are the independent small drops that occur around that main central drop. So droplet size, when we're looking at the comparison of these, we have a standard drop of about 100 microliters or 0.05 milliliters. Then we've got the drop that's occurring. We have rapid bleeding that gives a slightly larger drop as we see here. A little different here when we start seeing a comparison between the two. And we have the shaking movements that are cast off of smaller drops. And that's the result um, we, see he oh, we see here and here. So again, just keep that in mind of the droplet size can be impacted by the volume and also the method that it's falling. Free falling droplets. So free falling, this as the name implies, that's occurring just because of the force of gravity. We have 0 0.6 microliters, 1.1 uh, millimeters. And we see the um, distance and the speed here and we see some other um, comparisons as well, uh, leading to how far they may fall, uh, meters per second, and the distance that they may travel. So again, this is just looking at some of the different uh, aspects that will occur. We're going to make, try to look at the background of these because typically observing a crime scene, you're only going to be left with the end result. So you've got to think about what may have occurred uh, to develop that type of result. So looking at the droplet size and shape, as you can imagine, that's important. And it's influenced mostly by the target surface properties. So understanding and knowing what that blood came in contact with is crucial to, its, uh, to the developing a full understanding. If the texture is rough or it's smooth, or what it, what's its porosity? Is it porous or non-porous? Is it kind of filled with a lot of little pores, or is it a very solid, smooth surface, for example, like glass or metal? The size or diameter is related to the distance fallen with little change in heights greater than 48 inches, 4 feet, or uh, which is about 1.2 meters. Assuming the standard 50 microliter drop of blood. So here's a single drop of falling height results, just to give you some comparison between 6 inches, 1 foot, 2 feet, 3 feet, and so on. The impact surface was smooth cardboard in this case, no change in di diameter beyond 7 feet. So this is great to use if we're looking, we're suspecting the blood fell between 7 feet and less. That can tell us some more vital information. Or if we determine or think it's 7 or 8 or 9 feet, it's going to be very hard to prove that in the sense that we can tell it was 7 feet or greater uh, in some cases. Effect of that target surface, whether, as I said, is it that hard, flat, kind of almost shiny surface here, or is it this kind of irregular, por more porous surface? That can impact uh, the blood, and it impacts how, it, when it hits, how it may spread out. Uh, it could spread out very smoothly if it's a smooth surface, so that kind of makes sense, it correlates. In this case here, we're having that blood droplet impact. We're having the surface tension spreading edges broken in a regular surface. And that's going to lead to something that's going to be a little bit different in the look. So again, that knowing that surface it came in contact with will impact the final result that we see. This is an example of blood dripping onto itself from a height of one meter and approximately eight drops. You can see all the blood coming in contact. You can kind of see how its um, kind of satellites have developed from that central area. If we look closer at this drop, we can kind of uh, see a little bit more detail of where the kind of convergent point is and where all those eight drops in this case all landed.
So hopefully this is kind of helpful in determining, kind of interpreting that bloodstain pattern interpretation. So we're looking at the end result, you can kind of have some idea potentially what may have led to what you're observing as evidence.